Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. Today's message is simple. Why sensible people avoid motivational speakers? Why sensible, sensible people avoid motivational speakers? Let me pin that. Okay, awesome. So, since we're going to be talking scriptural, I'm going to start with a quick prayer. And um, I'm going to keep this session as short as possible. Heavenly Father, I thank you for a beautiful new week. I thank you for the gathering of your children here. I ask that your mercy continues to dwell in us. I ask for your love and your wisdom to engulf us, Father, as we seek you out and are directed by your light. In Yahushua's name I pray. Amen. All right. So, um, like I said earlier on, why sensible people avoid motivational speakers? You see, yesterday... I stumbled upon a series of posts by some motivational speaker. You know all these people, they go wear suits. They go dress well. Konyanopata. <laughs> Baba was talking about Matthew chapter 13 verse 12 because he said this clearly. He said, The consciousness of lack attracts further attack on your finances. I did not say it. Matthew 13, 12 did. Matthew 13, 12 did. And you see, the funny thing is, I don't blame them. That goes into the fridge. Don't put it there. Why are you putting it there? Put the three in the fridge because of ants. So, hey Vic, I tried to call you earlier on. So, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. You see, I called Simply Vic last night to discuss this. I was like, bro, how do you mistranslate Matthew chapter 13 verse 12 to the point where you start assuming it is talking about money? And, and you see, I don't blame them. I blame the grassroots the foundation of your problem. A false Bible in the hands of false, subliterate, half-witted, unscholarly, biblical teachers who are nothing more than church factory marketers. All they know how to do is market church and get people to fool the church like Mumu. You see, if you read Matthew chapter 13, verse 12, in isolation in the King James Bible, here is what it sounds like. Matthew 13, 12. I'm reading the King James Version. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even what he hath. When you read this in isolation, you have the tendency to imagine that it is talking about money. Because, hey, your foundation is bad. You were taught by people who have equally bad foundations. And you're reading a Bible that was grossly mistranslated. There's no worse Bible that I've personally read than the King James Bible. It is filled with nonsense. King James Bible makes God look silly.
Because King James Bible said, Michael, so, uh, Saul's daughter that married David, was cursed and she had no children. Then the same King James Bible said she had five sons. How does someone that had no children till she die all of a sudden have five sons? Nonsense, no. If you are looking for nonsense translation in this life, just go and carry King James. Nonsense. They just translate nonsense. So, let's read this in context. How do you read scriptures in context? Remember last week I was teaching you the four translations of scripture. The literal, the moral, the allegorical, and the anagogical. The literal is the literal story. The moral is what you learn from it. The allegorical is when a character is superimposed in a story when a character is used to explain the story of another character for example george orwell's animal farm that's the best example uh, george orwell was not talking about pigs and and ducks and uh, uh and, and and donkeys he was actually talking about the society but he used um the the, the animals in animal farm uh, allegorically and the anagogical translation is the part of translation that leans towards spirituality so if we read matthew chapter 13 verse 12 but instead of reading only verse 12 if we started from say verse 10 let's see what led to verse 12 remember quoting scripture in isolation is dangerous look at someone beside you and tell them quoting scripture in isolation is dangerous if you read only matthew 13 12 it has a totally different meaning from if you read from verse 10 for instance and this is exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to read to you from verse 10 Verse 10 says, His disciples came and asked him, Why do you use parables when you talk to the people? Why do you use parables? That's the question. That's what led to verse 12. Why do you use parables? And he replied, You are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. And they'll have an abundance of knowledge but for those who are not listening even the little understanding they have will be taken away from them that is why i use parables so the question was why do you use parables the answer was i use parables to sh explain the knowledge of the secret things to you it has nothing to do with finances it has nothing to do with lack it has nothing to do with resources it has nothing to do with your ideas it has nothing to do with god blessing people that it it is a simple question why do you use parables and the answer is he's teaching about knowledge i just read to you from the preferred listen if you are a member of the free nation in christ go and get yourself a new living translation bible if you cannot find new living translation then get yourselves new international version if you have king james bible throw it in the gutter flush it in the toilet drop it in the soak away throw it in the refuse heap that's where it belongs it is useless for your spiritual life you will enter gutter with king james i don't they sing this thing they come throw away that nonsense bible get new living translation or new international version forget the nonsense that they tell you that niv is bad niv is 500 times better than king james king james makes god look like he doesn't have sense god caused somebody that the person will not have children inside that same king james bible the person now has five children stop using bibles that make god look silly I'm sure right now God probably has a a, a that thing that they used to roast suya inside King James in Yash. They are, they are turning him around fire, especially for the nonsense that he has done. 
to get yourself NLT. It's, NLT has its own errors. So all Bible translations have errors. Forget it. You can't find the perfect one. But NLT is so much more accurate than King James. NIV is so much more accurate than King James. Then after NIV and NLT, you can use Amplified. I'm not crazy about the Amplified Bible because the Amplified also tends to over-amplify. That's why my preference for the Free Nation is NLT. Get a copy of the New Living Translation. That's your King James Bible. Bonham, Flosham, Kotaram. No even dash person because if you dash person, you go spoil that person's life. If that book belongs in those being. You see, if you read this in NIV, for instance, NIV in this particular instance is not as explicit as NLT. And if you read verse 13 alone, it does sound a little bit like KJV. So uh, Matthew 13, 12 says, Whoever has will be given more and they'll have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. You see, when you read it, Someone said, I only read King James because of his nonsense English. Don't read King It's nonsense. Nonsense. King James, carry Lucifer, give Satan. That's why you will not see Lucifer in NIV or NLT. Lucifer is a name that was given to Christ in the New Living Trans, in, in, in the Latin Bible by Peter. Peter called Christ Lucifer. Go and look for Latin Bible and read uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Go and read it in the Latin Bible. Just look. Don't believe me. Just Google Latin Vulgate. You will not find it in your English Bible. English is a nonsense translation. Me, I don't teach Bible from English. I teach from Greek and Latin. If you, if you learn Bible in English, you will miss your road. They translated nonsense. The oldest English Bible is 400 or 500 years old. Christ died 2,000 years ago. And when they were translating English... They were translating it to suit their narrative. All, even the Latin and the Greek Bible were translated to suit narratives. At least it was not as bad as the, the English one was just polluted with nonsense. King James Bible is the only Bible that brought the word Easter. Easter that is the name of a river goddess of fertility. A marine spirit. That's the name. Easter, this thing I'm telling you, don't just Google it. Go and look for Bible Encyclopedia and read. Go and look for it and just read origin of the word Easter. It's there inside your Bible Encyclopedia. They don't even hide it. Only King James exchanged Pasha, that is the Hebrew Passover, for Easter, a pagan holiday. Ah, not use King James so you go lost. So I don't tell you they come. It'd be like saying my mouth. So, if you read NIV, and you read only verse 12, it says, Whoever has been given more will have abundance, and whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. But you see, if you read only that, it sounds like it's still talking about money, it's still talking about wealth, it's still talking about innovation, it's still talking about those wealthy things. However, if you also read from verse 10 in the NIV, it says, The disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? So it was a question. They did not ask him, Christ, why do you have so much money? They did not ask him, Christ, why do you drive around in a Lamborghini? They did not ask him, Christ, why do you wear a, a tag Hoya or a Rolex? No, they said, why do you speak in parables? His answer could not have been because I have so much money. It's like you coming to me and say, Daddy Freeze, why are you so yellow? And me, I'm telling you that because my mother is a lecturer. What does... Le why am I so yellow? Is it that my diet? Or I'm using bleaching cream? Or one of my parents, like in my case, is a foreigner? But that has nothing to do with my parents' occupation. So if you read... So if you read from verse 10, the disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, Because the knowledge, knowledge... 
of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you and not to them. Whoever has will be given more. They will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even the little they have, will be taken from them. That is why I speak in parables. So let's say he started and said, this is why I speak in parables. But then hung it. He started it, ended it. Why do I, why do I speak in parables? He now gave the reason and then said, this is why. I so whatever is in between is directly referring to the question they asked in Matthew chapter 13, verse 12. And it has nothing to do with wealth, resources, money, gifts, or anything. It has everything to do with knowledge. And you guys need to wake up. Like, wake the F up. Is enough. They've used this verse to lie to you. Now, if you read this in the original Greek Bible, the Greek Bible says, Hoti himen dedotai gnonai ta mysteria tes baselias ton oranon. Because to you, dedotai, it has been granted gnonai from gnosi, the word knowledge, to know. Gnonai ta mysteria, the knowledge of the mysteries. How do you translate the knowledge of the mystery to mean finances? As in, if you people are mad, must you follow mad people? How do you translate the knowledge of mysteries to bank accounts to those who don't have? And, 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 and I'm listening to Mr. Uh, Motivational speaker wear suit, con the type say, eh, sometimes when you don't have, when you don't have what? The scripture is not talking about a set of things. It is specifically answering the question that the disciples raised in Matthew chapter 13 verse 12, verse 10, which is why do you speak in parables? And the answer is because of the knowledge of the mysteries of Baselia. Baselia means kingdom. Baselion or Baselia. Uh, it, it means kingdom. The knowledge. The uh, uh, Gnonai ta Baselia. The knowledge of the kingdom. And you translate this to now mean money. How? Now, if you were to if you were to look at it again, it says, "Nonai ta mysteria te baselias," that's the kingdoms, ton uranon of heaven, the mystery, the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And all of a sudden, the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven becomes your bank account. And I'm trying to show people these, and then they are fighting me. Hey, the guy he meant something. You are translating it something else. Listen, it's not about this scripture. It has no other translation. Why do you speak in parable? In parables, because my bank account is abundant. Be thinking now. If mad person they dance for market, you go come out, Claude, follow and dance. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Mo, stop this nonsense. Then everybody go day in back. Hey, oh wow, you have spoken so much wisdom. Oh my goodness. Oh, come on, guys. Of it didn't shame me. Did they use the dinner and do you? Some of you look normal when I'm looking at you like this. This is how you look. In in your mind, you are like this. Did you that talk? Did you read they come out saliva? Na so na be inside. Un, the una brain don't erode finish. And let me warn you, these motivational speakers are dangerous. I started my restaurant with one grain of rice. Today I have seven houses in Banana Island. How do you allow these people to wind you up, to tickle you, to turn your ignition?
Let me tell you, motivational speakers are more dangerous than pastors. To me, me, I tell you, motivational, they are more dangerous than pastors. They the yarn of butter. They the yarn. They are more dangerous than let me tell you, pastors are Nigerian pastors are very dangerous. Nigerian pastor will carry your snatchy to hospital and go and heal people in Cameroon. Now they are work. Now that's what they do. That's what they, they do. They are dangerous. Then <laughs> motivational speakers that now use Bible, those are the worst because one Bible like this, they don't know. They will just carry one verse. They say the verse they minister to them. Verse where they talk another thing. Christ, they talk about the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Mysteria. Basalia. Ton Uranon. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And you say it is money. When the same Christ said, do not follow money. Let me read it to you. Matthew chapter 6. When you're there. In verse 19. This is Christ still talking to you. He said, don't store up treasures here on earth. Where moth eat them and rust destroys. And where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven. Where moth and rust cannot destroy. Where thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is. There the desires of your heart will be. Your eye is like a lamb that provides light to your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep the darkness is. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. So Christ tell you this. In con they teach about the mystery of heaven. Automatically, Nigerian man don't go there, go put bank account. As in, when they fear God, if I know they fear each other, and when I know they fear police, when I don't fear God. I'm asking you. Anybody that asks me nonsense on my page, you could just collect blocking. You understand? You could just collect blocking. Just know that one. Just mention any nonsense. Make I just block you. Fantastic chap. Collect your blocking. They go. And they teach you the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. You talk about worldly things. Waiting they happen for Twitter. You they mad me. That's why you don't learn. You'll be looking for which pastor to victimize. Meanwhile, all that they go they go, they go they collect your head from another side. I beg, I beg, I will close this life. I'm not getting anything to learn. Please, 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 please. Anybody will talk nonsense, go experience rapture. Now, now. That rapture way they read about for revelation. Go collect your own now. Make I introduce, make you go, make you go heaven, go meet your go meet Satan. Now, now, make I introduce you to Ram. Now, uh, two people don't collect rapture already. They don't rapture go since one guy can't call me today. Say, "Hey, eh, Daddy Freeze, I, I didn't, I didn't see anything. I just said I disagreed, and I now blocked you. Now, so they block person. You talk, say you disagree. You go, don't go there. Go talk nonsense. Sometimes not even me, me they block my team. They hear, they watch. Once you talk nonsense like they are paying, they don't come out you one time. And now, listen, if I block you, reconnection fee na fifty k. Let me just tear you down. If I block you, don't come and call me and phone me and send me text like that. Be they block my father and mother on Instagram. Come and block me. 50k. Unblocking fee. 50k. And if I block you twice, that's I block you. Come back. 100k. The third time. Permanent blocking. You and your destiny. Collect rapture. They go your own. They go. 
So please, 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 let's be using our sense. You can't start a, 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 a restaurant that gave you three houses in Banana Island by selling grains of rice. Stop it, stop it, stop it. You are endangering people's lives. You are twisting people's destiny. Also, you want chop money. So please, 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 anybody want to talk nonsense, collect now. Just, just talk nonsense now. They, go, they I will just block you. Ah. Straight up, 50K on blocking fee for first offender. Second offender, and 100K. Because if, if you're my block, you know they pay me. Why would I they call me for back? Say that they freeze. I didn't say anything now. They blocked me. Somebody block. Make I show you person message today, today. So you go, no, say, nobody said they downgrade. See, okay, black like in a WhatsApp, he send them. So I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. So, guys, I'm coming back. I have an interview at 11 o'clock. I'll be right here, um, back with you. Don't you dare go anywhere. I love you all. Take good care of yourselves and um, stay blessed and don't let don't let motivational speakers use you and eat bye guys